The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You have markets starting things off across the board in green territory, but barely. You got the S&Ps up by three points right now. You were in negative territory overnight, 3 a.m. the lows down at about 42.60. We were just approaching 4,300 right now. You're positive by three points in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by single digits as well, 13,500. You get the Dow just under 34,000. We were just above that level briefly. Again, all the indices positive, but all of them by single digits. Dow positive by eight. Russell, positive by three. We jump to crude, catching a little bit of a lift this morning. We make it to $85 yesterday. You're chopping around with lows of 86 yesterday. Excuse me, 85 was Tuesday, 86 was yesterday. How about $90 coming at you for the price of crude as we catch a little bit of a bounce? You got the gold contract catching a little bit of a bounce. We give some of that back in the last few minutes. Gold up $2 right now in the session. Uh, well off where it was to end last week, though, eighteen nineteen 19 for that gold contract. And you jump to notes and bonds. There's a little bit of volatility for you to kick things off. Right now, you're positive by three ticks on the session. But boy, we just gave up about 10 ticks. At 8.15 this morning, you were at 119.07. Right now, we're trading 118.27. We jump over to the VIX. Right at about 20, which is where we've been chopping around for the better part of this week. Monday, you accelerate to that area. And since then, just chopping around around 20. Now, you take a look at the daily. I brought it up before. Quite a pullback on this VIX. Uh, risk reward wise, in terms of where this VIX goes, Right? Do you see it pulling back to 16, 14, potentially 18? We kicked off the year, okay? Kicked off the year, folks. Now remember, kicked off the year at all time highs of 4,800 in the S&P at 1650, about, okay? We're sitting at about 20, as in pretty close to those price levels, considering the volatility we now face August 18th versus the volatility we faced in January. You know, we knew that rate hikes were coming in January, but nobody knew that inflation was going to be so persistent. Many people thought so. Nobody knew it. There was still a huge camp that was saying that transitory factors, including the chairman himself, were going to take over. Uh, keep it in mind, because these VIX, you know, chopping around at a pretty low level, looks like the VIX is not going to be comfortable going under 20 anytime soon, even with an S&P sitting pretty comfortably at about 4,300. All right, where do we kick things off? How about meme stocks? Uh, Bad Bath & Beyond. Yesterday closes at 23. You had a run up to 30. Let's put this thing on a 15 minute to see the action. 30 early yesterday, made it to 28 late in the day. It collapses overnight, and that has to do with Ryan Cohen, second biggest shareholder, the guy who started the meme craziness. Uh, he's selling everything he's got. Yeah. He plans to sell as many as 7.8 million shares. Folks, yesterday, this thing closed at 23, right? What is that? He's almost got 8 million shares. You're talking about $200 million position in this equity that he's going to sell off five months after disclosing a stake in Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, he's selling everything. Uh, it might sell as many as 7.78 million shares of Bed Bath & Beyond, along with some call options as well. You have the stock cratering, of course. Uh, it's been a little bit of craziness leading up to that. Now, yeah, you have downgrades, of course. Uh, Webbush, I think, said, yeah, 80%. Some of them, 80 percent. Not surprising, man. You know, it's it's a it's it's um, it's a game of hot potato, folks. And you got the guy that started it all leaving the game. Right. Yeah, I would not. Uh, I would not be participating in that one. Surprised it's not down more. Uh, Kevin Hinks on Fast Market at 12 o'clock. We'll talk to him a little bit at 9.15, get a little take in there. They set up a great trade yesterday. Uh, and, and I'm going to ask him to talk about it a little bit when we get back because it was a pretty cool trade in terms of how they set that up with a little butterfly action. Uh, their max profit in that trade that they set up was about 18 bucks, I believe. Uh, and right now, you got it sitting at about 18.40, but pretty cool nonetheless. 
And yeah, I wouldn't touch that thing now that he's out of it, man. GameStop, you collapse into the close as well. Give back all the gains you had on Tuesday. We check in on uh, the recent high flyer, AMTD Global, right? HKD, I believe, is their symbol. Yeah, this thing was just up to 2,500 when it was bigger than some of the biggest tech companies in the world. And you're trading at 186, chopping around. Still, still uh, a far cry from what did it go public at like five bucks, 12 bucks? Does that get us all the way back? Yeah, it does. So I would stay away from all that stuff. All right, let's jump around to some of the other headlines. We got Apple yesterday announcing September 7th, a new iPhone, less than a month. New devices, the iPro, iPhone 14 Pro line to get camera upgrades, upgrades and speedier chip. Remember the days that the iPhone literally had huge upgrades that changed the functionality of what you could actually physically do with that product? Now everything just gets better and better, but everything is already so good. And still, Apple get you to upgrade that phone every two to four years, right? Pretty remarkable. So you got the 14 coming down the line. I was just thinking, I got mine. I think I have a 12, and I think I got it December 19? No, December of 20. Yeah, almost two years ago. Uh, and I'm close to that, that point. I'm actually thinking I should contact my provider and find out, you know, you pay like a payment plan, usually for 18 months, two years, something like that. If I pay up on it and I can get a refund, um, a rebate or, or something like that, maybe I'll trade it up. My screen's got a little bit of a break right now. Uh, might be time to do it. More than half of Apple sales last year are iPhones. They're just remarkable. They keep plugging along to that degree. We jump over to Apple, so they'll have that in September. Apple shares. Yeah, look at that, man. There's a lift for you yesterday. Now, Apple's got 16 billion shares outstanding, folks, from the early action yesterday to where it was in the high. You're talking about 60-plus billion dollars in market cap added. This morning, though, they're going to get uh, kick things off down about a dollar to the downside at 173 and change. Not bad. You're bumping up against levels, man. We got to 176 and change yesterday. You're almost back to all-time highs for Apple, the biggest company in the world. I mean, if that's the case, my goodness, what would this market be doing if Apple – the biggest company in the world wasn't basically at all time highs, right? I mean, Apple's trading at prices that it traded at December 23rd. For context, okay, December 23rd, the S&Ps were sitting at 4,700 almost, right? Another 12% above where the S&Ps are at right now, even with Apple, and you are bumping up against that 3 trillion mark. 182 and change is the 3 trillion mark for Apple as we're up about four points coming into that. Let's check out some of the other FANG stocks this morning. Amazon shares. Yeah, interesting. Uh, yesterday, heard my dad talking about Amazon. They might be getting into social media. Uh, Amazon catches a little bit of a spike yesterday to above 143, pulling back from 146. Why not? We'll reference that article right now. Uh, and there it was, testing a new photo and video stream app similar to TikTok. TikTok, well, influencers are convincing followers to unsubscribe from Amazon over labor disputes. Yeah, they have, they have quite the, uh, I was looking this up, right? And it's interesting. You just Google Amazon TikTok trying to find the articles. And what do you have? You have they're testing the TikTok-like app. And then what do you have? Young TikTok creators are organizing a campaign against Amazon to support uh, workers. So maybe Amazon trying to control the conversation with their own social media site, as my dad was saying yesterday. Imagine you're just on social media and they just, instead of watching videos, you're getting people to watch videos and just buy things on a, on a, on a little hamster wheel, right? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to my man Kevin Hinks from Fast Market. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, great. Hopefully you can hear me, folks. We got the S&Ps up by three, NASDAQ 100 up by 14 right now. And let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, folks. Fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. We'll jump right into it. Kevin, I was talking about Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, you talked about it yesterday. Yeah. I watched the segment you guys did yesterday. Great segment, great program overall as usual. And I was hoping you could go over the trade you guys did because pretty interesting action overnight. Uh, I set up the trade, I believe, on my platform with what you guys had yesterday. Now, the prices have moved dramatically. But if you could talk about, real quick, just the segment, Bed Bath & Beyond, and the trade you guys set up, I believe, which is what I have uh, up here, Kevin. So what we did yesterday, and Tom White, my co-host, he made uh, he you know uh, brought up this trade. And what it was is we bought the 25 put in bed bath and beyond and then against and we we did basically bought the 25 18 put vertical right and then against that we sold the 18 11 foot vertical so what we did the butterfly and so we paid about a dollar one you know, right around a little over a dollar dollar 25 dollar 30 range for that butterfly that would peak out if Bed Bath & Beyond went back to $18. And where is it today, Tommy? About eighteen eighty, about eighteen ninety, right around that level, eighteen eighty. So this trade that we put on that was risk-defined and uh, used that butterfly strategy of selling two of, of your target puts, and that's the 18 strike. But we bought the 25, sold two of the 18s, and bought one of the 11. So any move right to this area, around 18 or in that area, Tommy, and this trade is pretty profitable with, uh, you know, the only risk being if it moves through that 
and towards the 11 strike. So, yeah, really interesting discussion we had yesterday about Bed Bath & Beyond. I, I Listen, you did such a great job, man. I knew you could walk through every part of that trade as, as a trader that you are. And I have it up on the platform, folks. And so, you know, you're buying a 25 put. Now, these are September, Kevin, correct? So September yeah, 16th. September so you guys were giving yourself uh, almost a full month out to the September expirations. And then you're selling the 18 puts. So you're basically buying a put spread from 25 to 18, folks. And then you're selling the put spread from 18 to 11 to help uh, with some of the payment, you know, some of the debit. It comes in at $1.24. Yeah. And I've got the chart up here, Kevin, in terms of the risk reward when they put it on the risk profile on the Thinkorswim platform. And you can see, folks, defined risk of, of and right now it's showing $1.24, Kevin, like you said, for a debit for that trade on my Thinkorswim platform. And that's your risk when it gets above that price point of 25, folks. That's your risk when it gets above, um, below 11. But inside of that range, man, you got $14 for a stock that's trading at 25 uh, and you got to break even from about 12 to 24. It was just a great trade, man, because I, of course, everybody might go the first step, Kevin, right? Which is maybe you think, okay, I'll buy a, a put spread, right? I'll buy the 25 put. I'll help finance that by selling the 18 put. And I love that you guys just took it one step further and, and almost did it again by selling the 18 and buying the 11 uh, to help even further. It was a great trade, folks. Uh, and yeah, some pretty interesting headlines yesterday after your segment, to say the least. With that in mind, Kevin, we got a new day ahead of us. What are you guys talking about today coming up on Fast Market? More earnings coming out today, Tommy. We'll look in the first segment of the show. We'll look at Deere and Company, John Deere. They have earnings coming out uh, tomorrow morning before the open. Then, like Folio, we'll do a presentation on Foot Locker. They have earnings coming out before. We'll look at the overall effect of Nike and their direct-to-consumer and the effect that it's having on Foot Locker. And then in the C Block, we'll look at Chipotle, uh, a name that you know by by Brian Nichols admission, a company that's not really being hurt by inflation because their clients, their customers are the higher to middle end in the uh, income spectrum. So interesting uh, how that is defining or helping define what this economy is doing in terms of inflation and where it's affecting consumers. So uh, John Deere, uh, Foot Locker and Chipotle today. Three great stocks, man. And, yeah, quite a chart for a Chipotle I got up here. You're uh, flirting around 1700 right now with a bid ask. Uh, pretty strong year considering what's happened in some of the other equities, of course. And, yeah, interesting. I mean, we even saw earlier this week, right, Kevin, talking about Walmart, one of the reasons they're doing so well, uh, actually reaching some of those higher income brackets as people come down to save some extra money with inflation down the line. Uh, and then Target, not quite keeping up to the same degree, at least with Walmart. Kevin, I apologize for the technical difficulties, but I think we saved the segment, man. I appreciate it, and we'll be watching uh, Fast Market at 12 o'clock today, man. No problems, Tommy. Have a great day. You as well. Folks, tune in every trading day. Outstanding program. And yesterday, I'm telling you, I'm sitting there watching it, right? It just makes you think about the type of trades that you can make, folks, when you have market opinions, okay? Uh, it was an outstanding trade setup. You talk about defined risk on an equity that's going bonkers, right? Let me pull up. BBBY yet again. I found it remarkable that for a dollar twenty-four, and you're going to have to have some price discovery, as they say on fast market folks. You're going to have to have some price discovery about where that bid ask is, because when you're making these multi-leg trades like this, okay, there's not a super deep market of bids and asks for a four-legged trade of, you know, a butterfly option position a month out, even in a stock that is traded as actively as Bed Bath & Beyond because you think of how intricate it is. So you're gonna have a wide bid ass spread potentially. So you're gonna have to have some price discovery, okay? And sometimes it might not be possible for like full disclosure of everything to get the exact price that this yields when you're talking about the middle of the market because sometimes that market in multi-leg option trades is very wide, okay? But if you're looking to trade a meme stock, I love this way to trade a mean stock because if you are able to get executed and you do discover where that price is that you get filled and you you consider that a reasonable price of execution, you're risking 124 bucks on an equity. And guess what? This thing's close to 18 bucks this morning and that would be your max profit of almost 600. Stay tuned folks, we'll be right back for that open. of 
looming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You've got an S&P. Right now, flat, NASDAQ 100, barely in the red, Dow, barely in the red as well. Uh, now, these option markets take a few minutes sometimes even to chop around enough, folks, to get an accurate price reading of where you are in a specific trade. Let's see how Bed Bath & Beyond, I'm just going to walk this over one more time. So you're trading at about 1880 right now, okay? Now, it's going to be interesting with this trade. It, it is so far out into the future, okay, that the reason why you're able to risk a dollar fifty for this hypothetical trade we were talking about with Kevin, okay, to make a potential 550. And the reason why you risk um, that money to make that money is you have a $7 range, okay? So your max profit in the put spread is at $18, and your max profit in the put spread you sell from 18 to 11 is also at $18, okay? So ideally, on September 16th, if this thing expired at 18 on the dot, you would make whatever the difference is, $7 minus whatever you paid. So call it $575 about. Now what you can see though, okay, is that we paid about $1.24 if you'd executed this yesterday. Maybe you paid up to a buck fifty or something like that yesterday because I looked at it when they were trading it. Even with the type of move you just got, okay, you're barely in the green because there is so much volatility still priced into this equity that uh, they're not gonna let you out with that big of a profit on a defined risk trade because everybody would love to find risk 
in this market. So interesting to see. We'll keep that up, but maybe you have a slight profit in that equity, and that's with Bed Bath & Beyond dropping from a price of 25 to 18 overnight, right? In many other equities, folks, okay, you achieve a much greater profit, but in this equity, okay, there is still so much volatility priced into every price spread along the way, okay? So to show you real quick, we're talking about the September 16th, a month out, okay? We were selling, excuse me, we're buying the 25 put, okay? We're selling two of the 18s, and then we're buying the 11. They're all trading with such high volatility and implied volatility, okay, that you're not getting the type of movements that you may get when yesterday the equity was trading at 25 and today it's trading at 18, but they've all moved in pretty dramatic fashion to where you add up all the prices, okay, and yeah, you know, that's not a nothing profit, folks, okay, because you were paying a buck, not saying even, I'm trying to keep track of this in my head. saying it would be even a cheaper trade. I mean, the volatility, this is the disclaimer, which is why I covered this in the end, right? Um, it's almost a broken market when you have implied volatilities to this degree, with the front end at 633% and the contract we're trading at 304%, okay? Trading them up to that point, okay, your risk profile, right? You see the purple line is today's action. Well, it's very difficult to get a big profit in today's action with where volatility, implied volatility numbers are. Okay, we're almost right where we were yesterday. And meanwhile, we have the stock moving from 25 to 18, which is our max area. But guess what? What this number is telling you, okay, is that we don't care if it's trading at 25 yesterday. We don't care if it's trading at 18 today. The odds that this thing is either much higher or much lower in a month anybody's guess and that's probably where it'll be because trying to peg a $14 price range on any of these meme stocks is very difficult which is why they're still giving you the same risk reward no matter where this thing is 25 or 18 you want action for a month doesn't even matter where it is today it's kind of the point which is crazy right but that's a nice lesson man to, to get how that went in terms of the price action check out fast market folks they're going to talk about it i'm sure they do an outstanding job this is a great opportunity to learn about how these move and how implied volatility numbers move i'm going to sneeze excuse me okay what is cool about that trade as well last thing is that you can make trades like that though without placing them on the meme stocks okay so maybe if you wanted to make a put spread trade broaden up the type of trades that you put together because let's say you thought this thing had price action potentially closing out at 18. Well, some people, if the stock was trading at 25, this is a great opportunity. I'm going to buy a put spread from 25 to 18 because I think it's going to 18. Why would I buy a put spread any further if I think the stock's only going to 18? Well, you want an even better trade then? If you don't think it's going past 18, then sell somebody else a put spread that starts at 18 and goes down lower. And you you absorb the premium. Now you face risk once it starts does start going down 18. Okay. So if you're bearish in equity, then you gotta pick how bearish you are. But that's what you're doing with put spreads already. You're capping your loss potential. I mean your your profit potential, as in you're capping the price action of that put spread. So they they do an outstanding job and check it out, man. They're gonna be talking about three great stocks as well coming up today. Deer tomorrow morning, Foot Locker tomorrow morning. They'll be talking about Chipotle Mexican Grill as well. All right, let's jump around to some of the other news stories we got. So I talked about it. Interesting that Amazon, you Google them and they got they got both worlds of it. They're starting a TikTok app and then they got the young TikTokers coming after them uh, to support workers' rights. Nonetheless, Walmart, they're going to explore matchmaker marketplace for social media influencers. I think that's a smart move, man. They're well aware of the power of influencers. So what are they going to do? They're going to use social media influencers to help the retailer, uh, and it's 100,000 third-party sellers. So what are they going to do? They're going to train the third-party sellers in how to use social media. Uh, Walmart Creator, Walmart Creator Collective, social media consulting and the promotion of goods and services and others through influencers. I've already seen um, – some of this, right? What is it? It's it's uh, Walmart style or something like that. People people post uh, 
on maybe Instagram or something and they, they hashtag it Walmart style or something like that. And so what you're seeing is you're seeing creators that put together an outfit, which is all products that they bought from Walmart. Yeah. Uh, influencer marketing, $16.4 billion this year. Yeah. Influencers, man. And it, it makes sense. You know, there's, there's no greater marketing than having somebody that you aspire to be or, or, or are fascinated by vouch for that product themselves. All right, let's jump back to some financial moves. Turkey overnight shocks the markets with a rate cut despite inflation near 80%. Yeah, so they already have their main policy rate at 14% and it's down to 13% now. Surprise, surprise, but they have 88% inflation. Turkey's in big trouble, man. Um, Erdogan over there, he's a bad dude in a big way. So I wouldn't have too much faith in everything going on there when you have somebody like that trying to keep control of that company in every way, uh, company, country, every way they can. All right, let's see what else I have pulled up here. Talked about Apple. Yeah, Warner Brothers, they're going to sell a stake in GB News. So checking out this, this equity, man. They have been punished. WBD is their symbol. Yeah, let me check this thing out. Low below COVID lows, the Bill Huang run up to 78.14, and now they're down to 12.99, down another 2% today. There's your drop off. At some point, I imagine that we'll find a low man. What are we talking about from market cap right now for this company? What a brother discovery. $31 billion. That's still a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. So be careful. Paramount, they're lower today as well by about 1.4%. We jump over to Disney, down about a half a percent right now. Netflix shares down a third. We got all the markets barely in the red. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps turning slightly red. We're negative by three points right now in the open NASDAQ 100, negative by 17. You get the Dow off 61. Let's check in on the meme stocks of all. Bed Bath & Beyond, 1956. Can't believe it's held up this well, man. If I told you Tuesday afternoon at the close that in 24 hours, Cohen was going to come out and say he was going to sell everything in this company, would we be above $20 or below $20, right? We're within about 50 cents of that price level. Uh, you get the point. We were at 30 yesterday. We were at 30 on Tuesday, too. Can't overstate that the biggest cheerleader of them all, folks, that was the whole rallying cry. Now, interesting to see he got out, got out of this. Uh, he had been calling for them to spin off the baby store they own. I'm trying to, um, um, uh, let's see if it lists in here. What do they operate? Bye bye, baby. Uh, to spin that off, because that is probably, yeah, bye bye, baby. So I wonder how that's going to play out, because that was probably a decent idea. But guess what? Even he knows that it's not a decent idea when the stock's trading at 25. Uh, and he's only got 8 million shares, folks. Okay, I say only 8 million, because the volumes at these levels allow for somebody to get out pretty quickly. And he doesn't want to wait till it's back at five. Okay? He's got 8 million shares. A month ago, this thing was at five bucks. Now, I think that was when he first revealed his stake back here. Okay, uh, he was probably unhappy that he was sputtering around at four dollars for a while, and maybe he's getting a little bit of a reprieve up at these higher levels. Maybe they do eventually spin that off, but it doesn't matter if they're going to spin it off on the things at nineteen bucks because it's way overvalued as as to begin with. Yeah, maybe a billion dollar deal. I don't think I've ever been in a Bye Bye Baby, but I've heard, have heard good things about it. And uh, with a one year old in the house, I do hear things about where you shop for uh, baby goods. And you gotta love shopping for your kids, man. I said, got. I I, sh I should really be creating baby products, man, because you want to talk about rationalizing overspending on yourself. Get a, a one year old or a newborn in the house and and walk through a baby store that's got all the outfits and the little foot, the feet, and the slippers and the hats. And now uh, the onesies and the shorts and the little toys and the chew toys and the bottles. You walk through that store and good luck with impulse buys, folks, to say the least. All right. Jumping back to what we have going on this morning. We got jobless claims. 250,000. Pretty, you know, these are just numbers as long as it chops around anywhere. I mean, look where we are, folks. We've been here since January, right? Now, you do have continuing claims, okay, rising a bit up to a level of 1.437 million. The market was looking for 264 applications. We come in at 250. That's the week ended August 13th. Continuing claims, which is one week uh, delayed, August 6th, that's for 1.44 million. Drop in jobless claims, still healthy labor demand, anywhere around 250,000, man, 200, even 275 is just the numbers that you'd be getting normally with the healthy economy. And so as long as we chop around at that level, I wouldn't be too surprised. Kohl's, out with their numbers. Let's see how they're trading this morning. They were lower on the retail. Kohl's, yeah, they're down 5.4%, man. Let's back this up even further, give it a five-year weekly. 
pretty remarkable, right? COVID collapses this thing down to about 20 bucks. You get up to 65, you back down to below 30 as they got hit with the same deal. Walmart, Target, the whole deal. Uh, Kohl's has a good deal going on though, folks. I'll tell you, in my opinion, just from a consumer, you walk into a Kohl's, uh, they got a lot of good products. I'm not sure the margins they're able to make, right? Quite a tough area to be competing in. But you talk about a good store that you feel comfortable in, and they have some heck of a deals, especially with kids, whether it's toys, cheap toys, cheap uh, just straight out clothing for children. And then you add on top of that, though, that I believe they have a Sephora right inside. So they're doing the deal stores within stores, et cetera. Nonetheless, you're down 5.3% on their numbers today, trading off about a buck 82, and check out the volatility they had on there. Down to 29.30, conference call begins, you catch a little bit of a lift for Kohl's. Let's see how some of those retailers are trading right now. Walmart, a little bit of a lift today. Target, basically flat to slightly lower on the retail. We jump over to the home stocks, lows up three quarters percent after their numbers yesterday. Home Depot down a little bit ahead of the numbers tomorrow. Foot Locker, down about two-thirds percent. John Deere, basically flat. And they're going to be talking about Chipotle Mexican Grill as well, coming up uh, at noon on Fast Market, trading about 1705. So it be interesting, folks, jumping around. I mean, there's been a lot of talk of the IRS and, and 87,000 agents and all that stuff. I was looking into it. All right, this should not be political. Something we should all care about. Uh, remarkable to see that part of the reason, this is where everything of... You can distort the truth by having a kernel of truth in anything, folks, right? So, so you know, I said, really? Are they, are they hiring 87,000 new auditors that are going to audit everybody? I'm concerned about that. Of course, anybody would be, right? Is that how it's going to come down the line? That's really not the reality of it, folks, right? Okay? It is amazing how many employees they are going to lose in the next six years, okay? Now, I had a few of these up here to pull out. They're going to lose... Look at. Oh, I got to get it up. It's 50,000 plus employees over the next six years they are going to lose in the IRS. 50,000 employees. Talk about having a, uh, an elevated age of your employees coming in. And the IRS audits, when you get into this, the percentages here, I mean, here's the bummer, right? Our biggest worry and this is Republican Kevin Brady of Texas, is that these audits will land on Walmart shoppers. There's no way that's going to happen in the context of this is, folks. Audits dropped 75% for Americans making a million dollars or more from 2015 to 2019 and only dropped 33% for low to moderate income filers. Okay, You have an entire segment and, and I should get the numbers exactly because the number of people that are quitting and just retiring. Let's get it exactly. At least 50,000 of the agent's current employees are expected to leave over the next five years because they're eligible for retirement. So this number is 87,000 by 2031, folks. They're going to lose 50,000 employees by the year 2050 or 60. Okay? So... It's important to understand the context, politicize, politicization of everything, but audits are down dramatically in a huge way. I'm going to get a couple more statistics in terms of how many phone calls they got last year, etc. Uh, and you're talking about replacing a workforce. More you are than ramping it up by 87,000 employees. Stay tuned, folks. Be right back to finish up the show. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts 
while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Taking a look at that Bed Bath & Beyond trade, man, you get a lesson for everything, which is why it's great to watch these programs, watch Kevin Hanks, watch all of our hosts, folks, especially the hypothetical trade they set up in these meme stocks, but taught me anything, right? That trade made no money, and you got to move from 25 to 18 overnight, but the reason why is, as I stated, folks, okay, in terms of the market still saying, hey, you're a month out, the volatility a month out. We're not going to give you a huge reward for 5 or $6 of movement in action in one day. Now, if you get that type of action into expiration, okay, then yeah, you're making a lot more money. But one day of movement is not going to shift, which is why you got the blue graph is September 17th, which is the day of expiration technically, as in they expire on the 16th. And the pink is the chart of today's profitability, and as you can see, basically, uh, there's no real way to achieve it because there's just so much volatility priced into these equities. Uh, back to the IRS real quickly. So some of the statistics I did want to pull out of that, okay? You're talking about in 2010, the IRS had 94,000 employees. They're down 20% employment over the last 12 years. 12 years have went by and you have 20% less employees. You're at 78,000 last year from 94. And of the 78, 50,000 are going to retire in the next five to six years. And this hiring of 87,000 is over the next 10 years, that figure comes into play. Okay. You talk about they have a backlog of 10 million unprocessed individual returns as of August. And you talk about uh, wait times, et cetera, to get up to here, how long they had, you're talking about the end it, come on. It's crazy, folks, uh, in terms of the wait times people had. Something like, oh, 
Let me find it to end it because it's a good one. Too much data to pull in one segment. I should have had it cherry picked out. Uh, nonetheless, you see the number of people. So dig deep into that. That's been a talking point recently. We should all want that, folks. Um, you know, we need people to collect taxes if you want a government to function. I know it's kind of vogue to say not, but it's not new employees. They're going to replace them over 10 years. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up next. Thanks so much for starting your day with me. Have a great Thursday, everybody.